Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation. My name is Marko Milic and I'm line manager at Accelerate in four times Street Insights MVP. Today, I will be presenting the migration of dumb content for Turkish Airlines from Media Manager to Binder. So without any further ado, let's jump into the case study. Most of you who live or work in Europe are familiar with Turkish Airlines. They are one of the biggest airlines in the world with their focus on Europe. They are a state-owned company located in Istanbul and have been Accelerate loyal partner in the SDO area for almost eight years now. Accelerate has been the implementation partner for the new website from the start of migration in the Tridium platform. They travel to 127 countries and over 326 cities over the world. In yearly, they have increased number of passengers, giving high importance to the website. This is because the uh, booking uh, or the ticket sales are done also over the website. This is relevant for us because they give extra focus to the destinations they travel to with a wide variety of images showing visitors how the destination looks like, what to eat and drink there, or what to visit. For example, if you come to Belgrade, you can visit Ada Ciganli or Kala Magdan and of course try Serbian Sarma. Hopefully some of you will be interested to visiting us. So, our story starts in March of 2020. We just finalized the upgrade to 8.5 and we were extra happy about that. But two weeks later, we got an email from SDL stating that the media manager will be decommissioned by the end of the year. Now, Turkish Airlines was one of the first clients that started using media manager way back in 2014 and not just for the website. They were storing all sorts of images, instructional videos and PDF documents for different applications like booking, customer management and FAQ apps. Uh, also during these years, the volume of content jobs kept increasing and increasing. So once they got the email in March, they started the procurement process for the new dump provider, keeping in mind the end of, end of life dates and also the amount of future content and the existing content that they had in the existing dump. Since Turkish Airlines, of course, is a state-owned company, they had to abide by all kinds of different rules and laws. Therefore, the whole process of procurement took a bit longer and was finalized by the December of last year with Binder being chosen as the future dump provider. Although this meant that we had to finalize everything by the end of the year, the last year, Turkish Airlines and SDL had an extension agreement by the end of May 2021, giving us about five months to start and finalize the project completely. As you can see from the slide, this was our proposed and actual timeline for the migration. First phase was related to procurement of new dam provider and was done by December of 2020. In December, when we received information that Binder was chosen, we approached the project planning by defining project tasks, scope and timelines. After that, in January and February, we were developing all the scripts for the export and import of data. We will also doing templating in content delivery API changes needed. Uh, in first two weeks of the March, we declared content freeze and did migration from Media Manager to Binder first. Then we updated all of the components and pages containing old ECL items with the new ones. And in mid-March, we started publishing. Now, Turkish Airlines has Dreamweaver template-based publishing. So publishing was a big thing for us and we had only about 45 days in total, which is extremely short time keeping in mind the amount of content Turkish Airline has to republish and the actual speed of Dreamweaver template-based publishing, which we know is not the most optimal and fastest one. So end of May was hazardous zone for us. So we had to find a way to first finish publishing by then. And in case we do not finish publishing, to have a backup option in place. More on that later on. Planning phase was straightforward. 
In December, we got introduced to Binder and right away we got to work. We assembled a team consisting of Accelerate, Turkish Airlines and Binder side, developers and managers with myself as technical lead. Since time frames were really short and we had a hard deadline, we had to create a realistic plan and stick to it, which in IT we all know is a hard thing to do. As I mentioned earlier, this phase included initial project setup and we got a shiny new UI for Binder with Turkish Airlines custom logo and colors as you can see on the right. Our migration development had few fronts that we had to tackle. First part was related to setting up Binder properly for Turkish Alliance content and future usage. It included different kinds of installation of ECL Binder first, which allowed us to browse and uh, link images and videos from Binder in Tridian. For this, we did just an initial installation of the connector. We linked it to provided test account and we did sanity check to see if it works properly. We figured out access with Infra Teams. Uh, then we set up a binder portal for Turkish Airlines usage. Uh, we created metadata defining users and securities and different specifics for them, uh, like Akamai configuration and all other configurations that made the life easier for the content editors. Um, we switched the test account with a proper Turkish Alliance account for Binder. At some point, we were happy with the results. The second front was focused on developing scripts for migration itself. So scripts which we would export all the binaries from Media Manager to Binder, including metadata and following uh, Media Manager APIs, import everything in Binder using Binder API. Um, Media Manager API was familiar with to us from the past because we were extensively using it, but uh, we didn't have a lot of prior knowledge for the Binder API, which we got really fast, really quick for the short time frames. Uh, the modification additionally that we had to do uh, was uh, updating templating changes, the c -sharp fragments and Dreamweaver templates because we had customization on templating and on the presentation side regarding image tags. Plus, HTML for Binder Video Player is different than the one for Media Manager, so we had to update that also. There was also a topic of uh, images being used in different website apps directly from Media Manager, so we had to update all those different applications also on the content delivery side. Uh, in our case, we were using Content Delivery API to query images by certain metadata values, and these images were used in background in certain application blocks. Um, they were queried by schema among other criteria, so all of these calls had to be updated because all ECL binder items were created based on the new ECL binder schema, unlike media manager items which were created on uh, ECL MM stub schema. Uh, just to note that all of these scripts were created in advance and none was used before migration itself. Uh, templating also had one additional request to be backward compatible during the republishing process. So once we were done with the republishing process, uh, we were left with the binder only templating. So it was done uh, in phases. So after all the scripts were ready, as mentioned earlier, we started the migration of the content itself. We used API to, to connect to Media Manager and retrieve all distributions, both online and offline ones. Our philosophy basically was migrated everything, no matter if it was online or not, because we did not want to lose any of the data beforehand. Since understanding uh, Media Manager distributions, programs and asset structure is kind of complicated ones and can be implemented in all many different forms, we decided to go with distribution first approach. This meant that our components had linked distributions in them because only distributions are live and visible outside of Media Manager. We knew that the first asset in distribution is the one whose link is at the end in an image tag or the video tag. So we decided to choose that corresponding assets from Binder to be linked to the component. This meant that the result at the end would be the same. 
The understanding here was that all assets had to be exported from Media Manager to Binder no matter uh, of their availability. The only question in mind was which assets should be linked in the component, keeping in mind that by using Media Manager asset was not linked, but distribution containing multiple programs with multiple assets. The second part of the migration was related to updating Go references in Tridian. This meant that we had to relink Media Manager ECL to the Binder ECL item in all components and pages and all other um, used items. The first thing that we had to do was publish all Binder ECL items so that Binder stubs are created in Tridian. This was one by hand because it was the easiest thing to do. The second thing that we did was to update all components and pages with new ECL URIs of binder stubs. For component, we had to replace Media Manager stub ID with binder stub ID in content and in metadata. You can see the example below of the image field in the component. We just replaced node with proper XLink property and that was all the work. We also had to update pages where we updated images added as component presentation on a page directly because we had um, we had some videos or images added as component presentation with appropriate uh, template. So for example, we had some videos added with video CT on a page uh, as component presentation added directly. So that had to be changed. changed. Um, beside this, we had to update all items in Tridian that had assets in metadata. This meant pages, component templates, folder, and so on. There were also those kinds of cases. For us to, to know what to replace with what, or which MM items with which binder items, we had to have some sort of mapping in place. The prerequisite for this was Media Manager distribution and binder asset mapping that we created during the migration. This meant that while we were migrating one item by one, we constructed this list that we use later on in the update process. The example you can see there on the left. The next thing that we had to do is take care of translation because some of the assets had translated content. For example, videos had description of authors or subtitles that were translated once using translation. So we had localized tabs with translated content in uh, metadata there. Therefore, we localized it proper binder stubs and copied all treated metadata containing the translated one. Since the localization is done on stub levels, we needed another mapping, one containing stub pairs, which we also constructed during the migration and it looked like the one on the right. At the end of this process, all of our content had reference to binder items, so we were ready to start the process of republishing everything. Basically, any media manager items had uh, were used reference set to zero. But the question was what to republish. Okay, we knew that we had to unpublish all media manager items because assets were published themselves to the broker. We also knew that we had to publish corresponding binder items in place, so that was also not a problem either. The tricky part was in identifying which items had to be republished. Uh, we knew that we must republish all updated pages and components or any static contents there. The problematic ones were the pages or components that rendered images from another component during the rendering process. For example, for each destination, Turkish Airlines has one component with 16, 16 main images and that is the main destination component, for example, Istanbul. All other components in templating by related keywords or by component link itself read images from the main destination component and use them, use them in HTML. So basically the complicated situation uh, came because this is done in templating during the rendering process. They only indirectly use these assets. So there is no direct reference to, to them um, and identifying these types of components can be a tedious and complicated business case. So I had a genius idea to query the component presentation table in the broker database with the query on the right, as you can see it. Um, 
by by look of it it gets all component presentations having media manager assets in the in them so from this we knew that these items had to be republished our main focus was to get these queries to return zero items per each publication Uh, when we started republishing, our numbers were not that great. Uh, we had two outscaled publishers and they were doing the okay job for our day-to-day -day activities, but not to the number of items that we had to publish in this short time frame. We had to publish over 56,000 items in 120 publications to two different targets, totaling to over 13.5 million items. We decided to publish one publication by one to go with the most important markets first, which in our case were the uh, Turkish publication and US publications. Uh, our initial publish time due to Dreamweaver templating was 15 hours long per publication. And based on that, our total estimated published activities was something over 3,600 hours or 150 days, which was unacceptable. This is without any other publishing activity by the editors or stuck in the publishing process where deployers or publishers were not working. And there was some downtime. If we calculated 20% overhead for those activities, we come up to six months almost. This meant that with our start of publishing on the 8th of March in architecture, where we had two outscaled publishers, one active deployer with 10 worker threads, we were end uh, everything at the start of September, which was too much time, time that we did not have. So we had to look into alternatives or how to speed up the whole publishing process and how to decrease downtimes. So in this slide, you can see our final numbers. We published everything within uh, 40 something days, two weeks ahead of deadline. We decreased publish time per publication to two hours and 15 minutes with over 20,000 items published per hour. <laughs> so how we did it? Well, first thing that we did is analyze our publishing. We started mass publishing with existing architecture and we were thoroughly analyzing the systems and we were looking into the bottlenecks. We knew that once we removed one bottleneck, new would arise. So we were fixing them one by one. So the first bottleneck that we observed was like with any other Dreamweaver template-based publishing, the rendering phase. We knew that the two renderers were not enough for our business case in this case. So we asked for the six new ones from the Windows team. We got them in really short time frame, and we requested the licenses from the SDL. They provided them also in, in the record time because the licenses are required for the 8.5 servers. Uh, then we analyzed the CM uh, database performance with the DB team and we fine tuned the CM uh, database for the high amount of rendering in this case. We optimized the templating, more on that later, and we increased the memory settings for the deployer workers at that point because we knew that the amount of uh, items the deployers would get would highly increase with, with this setup. We applied a few hotfixes on the deployer to keep it more stable and optimized, and we minimized downtime due to the stack publishing by introducing the publish reports, faster restart procedure, and monitoring. On the right, you can see the example of one of those emails. So, how to speed up a Dreamweaver template uh, based publishing. Well, first we removed everything that was not necessary or we optimized all of the codes that could be optimized in that regard. We were really thorough on that. The second thing that we knew is that we had some pre-render blocks that were added to all the component templates. They were in a compound template building block and they were executing uh, sequentially one by one. Each of these TBBs was calling different classes. So we uh, we tested and we observed that executing 10 TPPs calling different classes from same solution took 10 times longer than calling same 10 classes in a row from a single TPP. For example, you can see here that we have execute pre-render block class, which in transform method called 
the different transform methods of different classes. So that was part of our optimization process and it saved us a lot of time. So at the end, what are the lessons that we learned? Then deployer workers work like a charm. SDL really hit a nail on that one. Uh, this is because uh, we just increased the memory settings for the endpoint and workers. Workers were around 8 gigabytes. At the end, the endpoints were around 3 gigabytes, just because of the amount of packages they were receiving. And we did almost nothing else. They were stable, they were working correctly. Uh, after that, when we were almost at the end of the republishing, we observed that the database started locking threads. In this case, our WS customer support came to rescue uh, that we analyzed with them and our DB team, the broker DB, we observed that some of the indexes uh, had to be introduced on the new tables and after that we had no issues. Also, I observed that the publishing ties at around 1 million of transactions in the queue. So if you want to make your life easier and schedule the publishing over the night, um, to have some free time. If you send over a million items uh, to publish and they are all in waiting for uh, published status, then your publishers just die. <laughs> they just stop working altogether. So don't do that. Uh, what we also observed and what was our strategy was to publish only to the passive DC. So we had on live two DCs, one active and one passive. They are mirrored to each other. And uh, if you publish to active one, too many messages for the caching that come from the deployer can cause issues with the content service where content service just keeps processing these messages uh, and basically kills the caching strategy. So in that regard, we decided to publish only to the passive one, then switch them and publish to new passive one. Um, what is really important is that Turkish Airlines got uh, everything on board by getting uh, and in that regard they uh, finished the project two weeks before the deadline with over 6.5 times increase in the published speed. Um, uh, what um, even uh, what was our philosophy even from the start of the project was let's plan for the worst case scenarios. Uh, failure for us was not an option. So in that regard, we were thinking of introducing the custom mappings uh, in all of our APIs and applications. We were ready to have URL to URL switch uh, in the APIs directly in them in case our MM URLs uh, uh, got to a 404 point. Uh, so we had backups in place. Uh, what was later on observed is the issue where binder API limits required uh, for the binder connector uh, caused issue on our side because binder has their own limits which were later introduced. Uh, so our connector uh, used to hit these limits so in that regard, we introduced a new uh, service in the architecture uh, later on after the project was finished to custom store and cache API calls. So whenever we were browsing items in 3 for example, or publishing, it was hitting first the new API, which had a binder URLs, title and no other uh, data store there and if that was not working correctly then it only got to the binder api directly in that regard so uh, hopefully you have a nice time listening to my presentation and now we can move to the uh, q a section of of the presentation itself